morning. These things that are in um, on screen right now is everything that is in this book. So please do keep aware. I do have to read these to be able to um, continue. So I hope you enjoy. Bye, lovelies. A Stormy Mountain In the butterfly estate, a hair-colored girl stood about a foot away from a temperamentally paralyzed sound pillar on the floor. Uzui, despite not being able to move a single muscle, had a relaxed face, stared up at the girl with a smile. Please stop, she begged. Expre uh, what? Esperiet? I think that's how I see it. For a moment, Uzui had been launching surprise attacks on Yin. Every chance he got, the chances were few as she was always ac accompanied by either Mitsuri or Shinobu. However, this was one of the few times that she had been alone. Every time he surprised her, the man would always target her Katsubi mask, hoping to catch a glimpse of her face underneath. Yin, whose reflexes were unmatched, had always managed to avoid his hand. She would retreat a distance away, not allowing him to get any closer. The first times he approached her, she couldn't sleep for weeks, apparently his, uh, expecting his surprise arrival. However, at the, as the time went on, the fear of him lessened and was instead replaced with annoyance. So, was fed up with his uncomfortable presence and just wanted him to stop. Only if you show me that flamboyant face underneath the mask, Yin sighed. Maiko-san has already informed me about the girl you can't seem to forget. However, I'm not, I'm not the Yin you're looking for. Please stop bothering me or I'll have to report you to Okiyata-sama. I think that's how you say his name, but he's the head of demons there. Izumi, Izumi, Izumi ignored the last part, take off the mask, and we'll see. She frowned under the mask. However, before she could say anything, a crow landed on the open window that the sun pillar had entered through. Squawk! Mission for Yin Lin! Head to Kumatori Mountain. Squawk! The hair color girl glanced at Izumi before quickly turning away, leaving the man sprawled out on the floor. As instructed by the crow, she followed the directions. Quickly arriving to the intended de destination, she shivered. Not used to the cold. Yin let out a breath, hot air making a cloud within the cold weather. Spikes, it, specks of snow stuck to her red hoary, slowly seeping into the fabric. The hair-colored girl as ascended the mound, her breath hitching once she came across a small house. Two bodies laid in front, the form of a small girl covering the body of a little boy. From the amount of blood spread across all of the walls, the girl could see that those weren't the only casualties. Coming closer and seeing the blood, the blood children scattered in the house, her internal sorrow transformed into anger. This monster, clenching her teeth, a small feeling pinched her gut. This feeling told her that the demon responsible for this left not too long ago. The girl flew out of the house, making a turn. She ran for she ran forward, chasing her chasing her intentions. As she ran, the cold bit her ears. The snow, the falling snow, blurring her vision. Eventually, she came across a well dressed man. His black suit was strike across the white covered mountain. The man walked with luxurious, unaffectuated by the weather. Curious, Yin remained a large distance away. Quickly, unsheathing her sword and plucking a few needles from her sleeve, despite the, bell, the alarm bells ringing in her mind, the girl shot forward. A katana raised in her hand. I'm afraid I don't have time for this. A deep voice rang out, surprising the hair-colored girl. Just as she was a foot away from the figure, his head snapped towards her, bright red eyes. 
It was the last thing the hair-colored girl saw before everything turned black. I cut the eye color eyes slowly fluttered open at the bright rays peeking through the, from the window. The girl attempted to shield herself. Unable to move her arms, she looked down. Her entire body was covered in casts and bandages. Turning her head to the side, the girl noticed a familiar ki ki kabuki mask. Placed on the wooden table, her heart dropped upon realizing her face was bare. Suddenly, the door slid open. Yun's breathing halted, unable to reach her mask. However, her panic eased upon seeing the love pillar. When Mitsuri saw the familiar eye-colored girl, she cried out. Yin! Mitsuri ran over to the bedridden girl, dropping her knees at her side. You were asleep for so long, I thought you'd never wake up, the emotional girl sobbed. Yin wanted to pat her head to console her, but glanced at her wrapped hands. Turning to look at the shaking girl, she softly said, It's all right, Mitsuri-san. I'm fine now. Mitsuri sniffed and lifted her head up to look at the beautiful face that was off offering her such a kind smile. She felt her heart skip a beat, quietly rubbing the tears and shut off, snot off her face. She smiled smiled back. Yes, I'm glad. Yin felt a bit trouble. The girl looked over to the mask on the table beside her. Noticing her distress, the love pillar followed the girl's eyes. Oh, don't worry. We never let anyone come in here. Shinobu treated you while I stood guard the entire time. She started proudly. Yin let out a breath of relief. I'm glad it was just you and Shinobu-san that saw me. Still, do you Think you can tie my mask for me? I feel more comfortable with it on. At her words, Mitri felt a bit anxious. Well, the girl trailed off. Yin stared at the hesitant girl. That swirled her fingers together. Well, what? It wasn't just me and Shinobu that saw your face, the pink and green-haired girl conf confessed. What? I thought you did I thought you said you didn't let anyone in, Yin shouted, dismayed. I didn't, I swear, it was uh what's his face again? T Tokuma san that brought you in here. He was the one who discovered you. Apparently you both had missions on the same mountain. Once he brought you here, he, we made sure that he didn't come back, I promise. Despite her words, Yin didn't feel any relief. The hair color girl tempted at the new trembled at the new information and man had seen her face all of the warnings that her mother had given her flashed through her mind her entire past and trauma fought in to the front of her thoughts she squ squeezed her eyes shut and tried to shake them away but the deep feeling of fear didn't leave the girl dreaded the day that the water pi water pillar would approach her for months, the girl remained on edge. Mitsuri's protection had failed to offer any relief. Even as the girl recovered and was to top her con con concentration, she worried. She knew that time would come where she would be forced to meet Giyu. However, the con confusion that, oh, comfort that occurred was a lot less complicated than the girl had originally expected. The two had come across each other in the butterfly estate when the man just finished a mission. Giyu was quite impolite, only offering a short greeting before leaving. He didn't expect any abnormal behavior and remained his stoic self. The intention left Yin's feeling guilty and doubtful. Giyu had been the one to save her, yet had been avoiding him for the longest time. He didn't even did ha, he hadn't been anything like what she imagined or what she remembered from the men in her past. The hair colored girl started feeling doubtful towards the wounds words sorry, words of her mother. Thankfully thinking about Gyu, she thought maybe not all men. Unbeknowing to her a pair of undetected deep blue eyes followed her form at every possible moment.
I feel bad because I had to cut out sometimes because of loud banging noises. We're having construction, so yeah, so I'm sorry for that. Um, but thank you guys for listening. Bye, love you all.